This is God's Word to Feed Your Soul Ministry. Today you're going to hear a message that you may or may not heard before. This message comes from the Holy Spirit. The goal of our ministry is to spread the Word of God, to get people closer to Jesus Christ, so less people go to hell and more people go to heaven to show God's love towards one another. Today's sermon is Still Only Want These Selfish and Greed. The Ten Commandment is He Shall Not Covet, which means that you won't wouldn't shut out what anything that does not belong to us. Never have enough money is a symptom of the love of money. In James chapter 5 verse 1 and 6, I w a warning to a rich and selfish people. You rich people, listen, cry, and be very sad for the bad things that we come to you. You rich will rot and be worth nothing. You your clothes will be eating by bugs. Your gold and silver will rust, and in that rust will be a proof that you were wrong. The rust will eat your body like fire. You save your treasure in the last days. People working in your field, but you did not pay them. They are crying out against you. They harvest your crops. Now the Lord Almighty has heard their cries. Your life on earth was full of rich life, live, living. living. You're pl pleasing yourself with everything you want. You made yourself fat like an animal, reading for ready. The, ready for the days of slaughter. 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 You shows no mercy to good people. They were not against you, but you killed them. Obey them to them. Oath commandment requires that want to be thrown out of the human heart. Robbery is stealing. It is when you take something that does not belong to you, like the material possessions of money or a TV, other electronic items, stereo, game systems, DVD players, home audio equipment, clothes, and f furniture and cars. Or a, it can even be someone taking or stealing your husband or wife or your love. An example, it is your neighbors get a brand new truck. And this makes you think that maybe you really need a new truck. But what if you don't have the money for it? Do you want to steal it from the neighbors? You let yourself be misled. Satan tries to tell you you need something that you really don't need, something that you cannot afford. Satan tells the whole world that you need the newest and most expensive cell phone, laptop, and computer, cars, or whatever is the best. People buy the credit cards what they really can't afford. Satan will try to tell you away, take you away from God. The world is easy for people to brought or be bought and bribed. bribed. The greed of the world is evil. The evil in your heart and your mind. You don't care about how to get it. It you just want it. If you steal it, what do you you care? Quit being a thug. If you want something, work for it. Quit doing it for the rush of theft. This can get you jail time. It is not good for you. You might be able to bond out with a lawyer. You might even be able to get out of the charge if you pay enough money. If there are no witnesses or video, God still knows what you did or do. Now Leah will tell you about wanting. Wanting or envy. It is a feeling of being discontented or being resentful and wanting the longing of something that someone else's, whether it be money, a husband, wife, children, house, car, or other possessions, qualities, or even somebody's luck. It usually happens to the same gender. For example, a man being envious of another man and what he has, or a woman being envious of another woman and what she has. These people become bitter. They are not happy with their lives in its current state. They are discontented. An envious person is a person that feels inadequate. 
They may have low self-esteem. They feel inferior or poor when they compare themselves to others that have what they want and they desire. Although if they had what the other person have, they would not know what to do with it because they, it still wouldn't make them happy because they don't have a relationship with God. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Um, now Reed will tell you about hell. If you don't want anything to do with God, there is a place for you in hell, a forever torment. Demons will get in your face and make fun of you. You can scream there, no one will care. Many others are screaming there as well. It is the music of hell. There is never a quiet moment there. There is, this is in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 20 and 21. But the evil people are like a angry ocean. They cannot be quiet and peaceful. They are angry like the ocean. They stir up mud. My God says there is no peace for evil people. There is no water. This is in Luke chapter 16 verse 19 through 24. Jesus said, There was a rich man who always dressed in the finest clothes. He was so rich that he was able to enjoy all the best things every day. There was also a very poor man named Lazarus. Lazarus' body was covered with sores. He was offered put by the rich man's gate. Lazarus went only to eat the scraps of food left on the floor under the rich man's table, and the dog came and licked his sores. Later Lazarus died. The angels took him and put him in the arms of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. He was sent to the place of death and was in great pain. He saw Abraham far away with Lazarus in his arms. He called Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to me so that he can dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm suffering in this fire in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. As for you, because of the blood of my agreement with you, I will free my prisoners from the waterless pit. Those in hell don't believe in the truth of God and Jesus Christ. There is Isaiah chapter 38 verse 18. For Shia, Sheol. Sheol, cannot think your death can, cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot, cannot hope for your, your truth. This is because in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. S sh snap out of it. Don't wait. This to, this to be your eternal life. Do you want Do you want in? Do you want it? No, you don't. Hell is there, and there is no light, for God is light. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus told the people again, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never live in darkness. They will have the light that gives life. Hell is a prison. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 22, they will be gathered together. They will be thrown into a pit as prisoners. They will be shut up in prison. Hell is a place of torment. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 19. You are thrown out of your grave like a unwanted branch cut from a tree and thrown away. You are covered by bodies that die in battle. You have been thrown into a rock pit as a shoulders walk on you. You are weak and have trouble moving there. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse 10, the leaders will make fun of you. They will say, now you are weak as we are. Now you are just like us. In Psalms chapter 88 verse 4 through 9, they think I am on the way to my grave. I am like a man with no strength. I have been left as dead like a body lying in a grave. You don't remember dead people. They they are cut from your care. You brought me close to death. I am almost in the dark place of the dead. 
you've been very angry with me. All your waves crush me. You, t you take my friends away from me. You made them hate me. I'm trapped, and I can't escape. My eyes are weak from crying, Lord. I pray to you every day. I have lifted my hands in prayer to you. If you don't change your life, you cannot have one hands in the world and one hands with God. It just it just will not work. This is humanity, nature, to want to have your cake and eat it too. You want it all, and you want it now. This is selfish living. You are heading to hell where there's no bond, no <coughs> lawyers, and no way to buy, buy your way out. You would be stuck there forever. Maggots will be the bed that you lie upon and maggots crawling all over you, covered you like a blanket. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. Your pride has been sent down to where the dead are. The music from your harp announces the coming of your proud spirit. Maggots will be the bed you lie on, and maggots will cover your body like a blanket. In Job chapter 24, verse 19 and 20, So the grave snatches away those who have sinned. The womb forgot them. The maggots feast on them sweetly. The wicked are no longer remembered, but they're broken like a tree. There are so many of them, you will never be able to get them off you. They feed sweetly upon your sin. This is where you are hidden if you do not change. This is in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. You are not dead yet. Your time and judgment isn't set. Everyone must die. Once after a person dies, he is judged. You have hope that you can change. You don't have to go to hell, that terrible place of torment. There is only one way out, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Calvary's cross. But you have to have a relationship with him. Their fire is raining down on the wicked in hell. This is in Psalms chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. The Lord tests the righteousness, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain down fires, coals, and burning sulfur, and hot, dry wind will be there. Lot. Now Leah will tell you about scriptures. James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. In James chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, you are to submit yourselves to God. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desire that battle within you? Your desire, but do not ha oh, you desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you do not you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the Spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why Scripture says... God is against the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come nearer to God and he will come nearer to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 21, My brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve 
one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with one another. So that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, committing sexual sin, being morally bad, doing all kinds of shameful things, worshiping false gods or idols, taking parts in witchcraft, hating people, causing trouble, being jealous, angry or selfish, causing people to argue and divide into separate groups, being filled with envy, getting drunk, having drunken orgies or wild parties and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Keep me near you like a seal that you wear over your heart, like a signet ring that you wear on your hand. Love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as strong as the grave. Its sparks become a flame, and it grows to be a great fire. Now Reed will tell you more on greed. All of these won't control you. This is Satan controlling you. He has made you a slave to them and the world. The world is all about the dollar. If you have this problem, you probably have a greed demon in you. Enough is never enough for you. You always want more and more. You are never full. Why? Because you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have a hole in your heart that can only be filled by the Holy Spirit. You try to shove shovel all of this garbage in there. Quit trying to steal another man's wife. And lady, quit trying to take another woman's husband. I will make it mine. It will be mine. I will own it. This is also selfish. You thinking of yourself. People of the world, with all they have, they want money of others. Satan make you like you are a addicted addict. addict. You will do anything to get it. You don't care what or who it who is in your way. This is in the Bible, Matthew chapter nineteen, verse four through six. Jesus said, "Surely you read the scripture." Yep, I did. When God made the world, he made them male and female. And God said, so a man will leave his father and mother to be united with his wife, and the two people will become one body. So the two becomes one flesh. When God has joined two people together, no person should separate them. What God has brought together in marriage, and the two are one flesh, flesh or body, that no man or woman should try to tear apart or destroy what God has brought together. Now Leah will tell you about being selfish. Selfishness. A person who does not care about others. They are all wrapped up in themselves. They are prideful and have a puffed up ego. They are self-absorbed, obsessed with themselves. They take tons of selfies. They are uncaring of others that are less fortunate and others that have less money or possessions as themselves. People that are so self-absorbed and selfish can result to criminal acts such as assault, theft, and fraud. This is the threat of violence to take from others what they do not want to voluntarily give up. This is a one-sided transaction to benefit the greedy and selfish. There are also non-criminal transactions such as emotional manipulation. For example, if I pressure you to do something that you do not want to do, I make you feel guilty. Or by yelling or being unpleasant, throwing a temper tantrum or doing something in some other way that I get what I want at your expense. There are negative consequences that outweigh the temporary gains. Obviously, criminal acts can result in fines or jail time, but emotional manipulation can have long-lasting, long-term effects. If you exploit people, they become less likely to cooperate or have anything to do with you, or even be in the same room with you. They may seek also revenge against you or ask others that are more powerful to seek against revenge against you. 
We often live like parasites, taking all that is necessary from others for our own selfish individual gain. The opposite of a selfish person is a selfless person, a good person that thinks of others first. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Being selfless opens up the world to a person. The more giving that one becomes, the more one understands people who are different from yourself. The heart and mind becomes more open rather than the tunnel vision of self selfishness. When you're selfless, you embrace and you care for others. If you embrace and care for others, you understand and appreciate everything more and yourself more. Being kind, loving, and compassionate makes you who you are, and that without a doubt would make you an extraordinarily selfless person. Altruism is the principle and moral practice of concern for the happiness of other human beings, improving the quality of life, both material and spiritual. Now Reed will tell you how to pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7 through 10, the lawsuit that you have against each other shows that you are already defeated. It would be better for you to let someone wrong you. It would be better for you to let someone cheat you. But you're, you yourself do wrong and cheat, and you do this to your own brothers in Christ. Surely you know that the people who do wrong will not receive God's kingdom. Do not be fooled. These people will not receive God's kingdom. Those who are sexual immorality or worshiping idols or taking part in adultery are men who have physical relations with men, steal or selfish, get drunk, lie about others, or cheat. Now Leah will tell you how to make your life simpler. When we simplify our lives through Christ Jesus, you will discover a newfound freedom. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, I tell you this, but not because I need something. I've learned to be satisfied with what I have and whatever happens. <clears throat> I know how to live when I am poor and when I have plenty. I have learned the secret of how to live through every kind of situation, when I have enough to eat or when I am hungry when I have everything I need or when I have nothing. Christ is the one who gives me the strength I need to do whatever I must do. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be contented and happy with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you nor will I forsake you. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 4. The world is passing away, and all the things that people want in the world are passing away. But whoever does what God wants will live forever. This is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. I give this command to those who are rich with the things of this world. Tell them not to be proud. Tell them to hope in God, not in their money. Money cannot be trusted, but God takes care of us richly. He gives us everything to enjoy. Tell those who are rich to do well, to be rich in good works, and tell them that they should be happy and give and ready to share. By doing this, they will be saving up a treasure for themselves, and that treasure will be a strong foundation on which their future life will be built. They will be able to have the life that is true life. In all the things I have shown you by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of Lord Jesus that how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive in Acts chapter 20 verse 35. And God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, and have your lives built upon him. Be strong in the faith, just as you were taught, and always be thankful in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Make it your goal to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, so that you will not be dependent upon anybody. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. For we have brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we should be contented with that. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, now Reed will tell you about more. Jealous people, 
want want others have such as your lady or men cars houses job property or money you are not happy with your mate and once you want you have you think that if you only had what they have you will be happy you are jealous and you, your lusts after their mate you lust after their money and their things you want this is satan he wants you to think that the grass is always greener on the other side you are not happy you are bitter you want and what they have this is not of god god wants you to be happy with what you have not to want and want someone else has and to try to take it this is of the world this will not get you anywhere in life example if your kids at christmas if you teach them to want all of this stuff of electronics whether you can afford it or not you need to not teach them this is want i want this is beginning of selfishness Teaching your kids the right way to be happy what they have to get only get What they need not what they want Getting everything that they want never makes you happy. It ends up Making you miserable in first Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 through 12 Devoting to God is always for people to be very rich, but only if they are selfish with what satisfying. satisfying with what they have when we come into the world we brought nothing and when we die we can take nothing out so if we have food and clothes we will be satisfied with that people who want to be rich bring temptation to themselves they are caught in a trap they begin to want foolish things that will hurt them, things that run and destroy people. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have turned away from whatever we believe because they want to get more and more money, but they have caused themselves a lot of pain and sorrow. But you belong, you belong to, to God. So you should stay away from all those things away. Try to do what is right, to be devoted to God and have faith, love, patience, and gentleness. We have to fight to keep our faith. Try as hard as you can to win the fight. Take a hold on eternal life. It is the, it's the life you were choosing to have when you confess your faith in Jesus that wonderful truth that you spoke so openly and that so many people heard if you if you are jealous of someone else and want what they have it can be a car a man a woman a job anything else being jealous will not get you anywhere in life when you teach your kids that they can have whatever they want at christmas period you are letting them be the parent and you are the child you have to be a parent and a good parent has rules if not a child's life is confusion in galatians chapter 5 verse 13 through 26 my brother God called you to be free, but do not use your freedom as an excuse to do things that please in your sinful self. Serve each other with love. The whole, the whole law is made completely in the one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you, if you go out and hurt each other and tearing each other apart, being careful you will completely destroy each other the spirit and human nature 
So I tell you, live by following the Spirit. Then you will not do what your sinful selves want. Your sinful self want what is against the Spirit. The Spirit wants what is against your sinful self. The two are against each other. So you must not do just what you please. But if you let the Spirit lead you, you are not under the law. The reason of sin, result, result of sin, controls in your life clearly. It is includes sexual immorality, orgies and wild living, worshiping false gods, doing witchcraft, hating, making trouble, being jealous, being angry, being selfish, making people angry with each other, causing division among people, having envy, envy, envy being drunk, having wild and wasteful parties, and doing all things like this. I warn you now, as I warned you before. Those who do these things will not be in God's kingdom, but the Spirit gives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law that says these things are wrong. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their own sinful selves. They give up their old selfish feelings and their evil things they wanted to do. We, we get our new life from the Spirit, so we should follow the Spirit. We must not be proud. We must not make trouble with each other, and we must not be jealous of each other. Now, Leah will tell you about God's love. God's love in 1 John chapter 4, verses, verse 8. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 11, there is no division of people, for Christ is all in all. Christ is my all in all. He takes care of all I need. He supplies me with everything. Everything comes from Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not brag. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not selfish. And it can, cannot be made angry easily. Love does not remember the wrongs done against it. It is never happy when others do wrong, but it is always happy with the truth. Love never gives up on people. It never stops trusting, never loses hope, and never quits. Love will never end, but all of those gifts will come to an end. Even the gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking in different kinds of languages, and the gift of knowledge. These will all end because this knowledge and the prophecies we have are not complete. But when perfection comes, the things that aren't complete will end. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, and I made plans like a child. When I became an adult, I stopped those childish ways. It is the same with us. Now we see God as if we are looking at a reflection in a mirror. But then in the future, we will see Him right before our very eyes. Now I know only a part, but at that time, I will know fully as God has known me. So these things continue. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Now Reed will tell you about greed and Satan's lies. If you have greed in your heart, you think about money all the time. At night, you dream about it. You worry if you have enough of it. With greed, you, you can never have or get enough of money. You always want more. You put making money above God. Money is your master. You will do anything for more of it. If you could commit a crime and get paid and get away with it, with no eyewitnesses, you would, thinking that you get away with it. But God knows all and sees all. Satan tells you lies, for he is the father of lies. John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, 
for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his own tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan wants you to be greedy. If you let a greed demon in with it, it it's hunger. hunger, then you won't have enough time or energy for God. He knows that this will separate you from God. Satan secedes you and pulls you away. Seduces you. seduces you and pulls you away from God while with lies. With lies. The choice is yours. You choose your choice whether or not to give in to Satan and demons. If he gets you to act, it is because you let him. You can lead yourself to become demon possessed through the choices that you make. Example, getting drunk all the time, getting high a lot by watching a lot of evil movies, by playing with sp spirit boards, by playing evil video games, by listening to Satan music, or by doing meditation to open up your body to empty your mind for demon possession. But you don't have to be like this. Then let God give you a way out. Fix your life problems. The fix to your problem is Jesus Christ. He died for 98% of sins. There was, They were nailed to the cross. There are only two that are not covered. Now Leah will tell you about more about them. The two unforgiven sins. The first is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. This is in the New Testament in Mark chapter 3 verse 29. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forget, forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. In Matthew chapter 12 verses 30 through 32. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, which is Jesus, will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Number two of the unforgiven sins is the mark of the beast. How God feels about anyone who will take the mark of the beast is in Revelation chapter 14 verses 8 through 11. Then the second angel followed the first angel and said, She is destroyed, that great city of Babylon, she is destroyed. She made all of the nations drink the wine of her adultery and of God's anger. A third angel followed the two angels, and this third angel said in a loud voice, it will be bad for the person who worships the beast and his idol and gets the beast's mark on his forehead or on their hand. He will drink the, the wine of ang God's anger. The wine is prepared with all of its strength in the cup of God's anger. He will be put in pain with burning sulfur before the holy angels and the Lamb, and the smoke from their burning pain will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast and his idol or who get the mark of his name. Now Reed will tell you the way to get into heaven. You can make your life better by having Jesus in your life. You don't have to be a slave to Satan anymore. Jesus has already defeated him. Jesus is waiting on you to come to him. John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way, the doorway to heaven and to God. Don't wait until tomorrow. This is Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1. Do not brag about tomorrow, for you don't know what the day may bring. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are only guaranteed this very minute. So make the right decision to accept Jesus in your life. Do it today, right now. Don't wait. Jesus loves you. God loves you. You don't you do not know how much quit living a evil life and start living your life for Jesus Christ. Your life will be better. Everyone who has left his home 
brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, children are filled for me and for the good news. We get a will get will get a hundred times more than what he loved. Here is the world. He will have more homes, brothers, sisters, more children and fields. And when those things he will also suffer for his belief. But the age that is coming, he will have life forever. Many who are first now will be less in the future. And those who are less now will be first in the future. Jesus Christ has, our, has redeemed us in each, every one, every sin that you've done. God says you are free and forever of forgiven us. His off offering us of love, grace, and mercy. He is a good father. He is loving and kind. He loves you more than you can even know or understand. He is very he will go to the end of the earth to bring you back into his arms where you belong. The devil will pay for all of his crimes. But we must keep going and continue to seek Jesus with all our heart, so in mind. This is how to dedicate your life to Jesus. Say this prayer with me. God, I know that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is earth to suffer and to take the death penalty on the cross for my sin. I know that three days later he was raised from the dead. That he is alive now and forevermore. I ask Jesus to break the chains of sin and addictions in my life. To open my eyes and my ears so that I won't be misled by the world. I do not want to do these activities anymore. I want to be free from the burning father. Jesus, I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. Confess your confess. You are your sins to Jesus, no matter what they are, even murder, are forgiven. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I ask the Holy Spirit to dwell within my heart. I dedicate, declare, declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Now that you want to live your life for God, get a Bible started, read it. Listen to Christian worship music. Have a relationship with Jesus. Ask for forgiveness every day, daily. Find a good church that preaches the true word of the Bible. Read the Bible and check to make sure that they are preaching the right information. You have to leave your old friends alone or they can suck you back into the old sinful life. They might also be able to be your family if they do the same sinful things. You don't have to be a slave to Satan anymore. Jesus has already defeated him. Jesus is waiting on you to come to him. John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way, the doorway to heaven. See you next time. See you next week.